Your job as a leader is to get your people powerful where it counts, in your institutions and in your areas. And you know what that means? You ought to be positively gossiping about the stories, about people and what they're doing. Because if you don't talk about what's happening positively, you get no way to reinforce the vision. I, the key story here, and I, I want to I talk about this for a moment. Best manager I've reported to, Stanford Linear Accelerator, Palo Alto, California. I helped build the myelong electron microscope that they have at Stanford. That was my initial job. I was 17. My title was a lab technician. That was my title. I drove a truck. I don't know why they called me a lab technician, but now I'm sure it was for funding purposes. That guy had on his wall a statement I'll never forget. Every person that works for me knows something better than I. My job is to listen long enough to find it and use it. Every single week he took a 15-minute walk with each one of his direct reports. I had never worked for anybody before, so I, I didn't know what really being a manager was. And then I met Jack, and <laughs> I figured it out. Managers walk with people. <laughs> and I'm walking with this guy, and he said, Terry, you, you've been here a week now. I take a walk with each of my people each week, and your day is going to be Friday. And I said, fine. He says, I just want to ask you, Terry, what's been working for you this week? I was 17 years old. A lot of things had worked for me. I'd done pretty well in sports, and, and, and I, I had done well as a student. But nobody had ever asked me that question. What kind of questions do we ask teenagers? How's it going in school? Isn't that a common question? Because you're concerned about schoolwork. How's it going in school? Is it going well? Sports. Hey, hey, hey. Are you dating? What's happening? Are you on drugs? <laughs> Very seldom you say to a teenager what's working for you. I was blown away by that question. It was a construction project. I'm glad we were walking because I couldn't think of anything. And I'm walking with this guy. What's working? What's working? And I finally said, well, the guy's taught me how to load the truck. Because we have very sensitive equipment. I know there's a certain way of doing that, and I've been working on that. And he said, good, Terry. I'm glad you learned from the guys. But I want you to know something. When I first hired you, I knew there was something special about you. In fact, I expect to learn something from you this summer. You talked about mentors, right? I mean, you know, I looked at this guy like, oh, you're just too far away. <laughs> you don't remember what a teenager is like here. You know, I'm male, I, I'm making money, hormone with pants, get out of my way. <laughs> and the interesting thing, I will never forget him. Because every single week he asked that stupid question. He ruined my summer. Ruined my summer. Because every single week, he asked that question. Now I'm going to stop you and I want you to go back. Early authority figures. I believe the best models for, for management come in looking back at what it was in education. We've got educators here. How, how many of you agree? The way you get through school is you learn to read your teacher paradigm. You figure out how they construct tests. That's your initial job. I don't care what text you're given. You've got notes and text, right? In the first test, you study everything because you're not sure whether it's notes or text or both. And if you come out of the first test, you immediately go to your friends. Nothing from the text, was it? No, burn it, you know. I don't need it. I wasn't into learning. I was into getting through the hurdle. And you know what? You see, most of the stuff that teachers do have to do with answers, and, and I was expecting to get the answers from a teacher. And you know what he said? Every single week, I'm going to ask you what's working. I, I remember vividly the, the next week, he asked me the same question. I had a better answer the second week. Every week, he answered that. He is the best listener I have ever reported to in my life. He, he was more excited about our ideas than he was of his own. I was the only summer employee. Twice that summer, he said, Terry, I love that idea so much. Would you mind if we brought that up in staff meeting. I remember, of course, you're male 17, so you got to look cool. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that staff meeting, I, I thought he forgot. Halfway through, he hadn't said anything. And then all of a sudden, he said to the entire team, he said, you know, Terry came up with something the other day. In fact, he did such a good job of explaining it to me. And I remember looking at him like, no, I don't have any cue cards, I don't have nothing, I don't want any of this, you know. I was looking at him, I was panicked, don't ask me to do that. And he just looked at me, he said, go ahead. And I just stood up and I, I looked at him the entire time. 
because he had very warm eyes. And I just looked at him and I shared my ideas. Twice that summer, they made a, they made a change as a result of my input. He helped make me.